In today's video, I want to talk about how I prioritize my time specific to prospecting for new business and new pipeline. I will say this is largely going to be focused on prospecting activities. So in the future, if you want me to make other videos, especially when closing business, researching accounts or otherwise, let me know in the comments below. When I'm starting to prospect and try and find new business for the company that I'm at, I'm going to break this down in a couple of different ways. Obviously, there's things like inbound leads, and that's kind of its own category in of itself. Obviously, if a prospect fills out a lead and says, hey, I wanna see a demo or I need pricing information, you prioritize that over basically anything else, especially in an SDR role, borderline in an account executive role if you don't have other important meetings going on at the time. But from there, and part of the reason I'm making this video in the first place, is that it's getting more and more difficult to break through the noise when prospecting because there's so much technology out there. There's so many automated emails, there's so many ways that you can make numerous dials a day, you've got SDRs making hundreds of dials a day, even if you have something meaningful to say, it's unfortunate, but really I'm even myself, when I get cold calls, when I get cold emails, I really don't have a lot of time to put attention into them because I just have started to get so many. So my point being is not that cold calling is dead or emailing is dead, but what this means is the colder a prospect is, it's largely more and more difficult to actually have a meaningful conversation. So when I'm thinking about how I prioritize my prospecting efforts, how I'm gonna structure my day, again, aside from the inbound leads that I mentioned where they're filling out a form and clearly asking you for pricing more information, how I'm gonna break it down is going after MQL leads first. And if you're not aware, MQL stands for marketing qualified lead. This would be anyone that maybe downloaded a white paper, a webinar, a case study, etc. When I know that they have some sort of organic interest in our product, that's when I'm going to follow up and try and create a conversation around maybe what they're interested in, what they're trying to build or otherwise. The reason that I prioritize this on a day-to-day -day basis is maybe in something like Salesforce and HubSpot, I've worked at companies that all have Salesforce. You can usually run very simple reports to see who has MQL'd, again, meaning they downloaded a white paper, showed some interest in content, whatever it might be. You can download this information rather easily. And when you do it, at least maybe an hour a day, you make sure you stay on top of everyone that recently engaged with your content. You largely, more than other prospects, have good conversations because even if they're not excited about getting a cold call, they at least remember the white paper that they downloaded. And maybe if you caught them at the right time, they're interested in what you're doing, they'll take a conversation because it's fresh on their mind and they likely had an intent behind it, wanting to do more research, etc. This also leads me to the next type of prospect that I would go after following the MQLs, which would be if you're at a company that has information on usage data of the product, whether it's existing users or whether it's people who have interacted with free tiers of your product, many SaaS companies now have the ability to see how a user is using it. Is their usage going up? Is their usage declining? Are there common trends that you can see based on their usage that then you can set automatic alerting for internally? So what this might look like at the current company that I'm at is oftentimes our software tracks a lot of issues within your entire cloud deployment. So if I notice over time that they're having a massive increase in alerts, in issues, et cetera, now I'm equipped with information to come to them very specifically and be more of a consultative seller and ask them if they're aware of how much of an increase they've had or see and try and come in from the perspective of, hey, I wanna solve this problem because I can see that you're having way more events or you're using way more of our product or conversely, maybe they're using way less. Have they stopped using your product for other reasons? Are they not seeing the value of your product? These are things that you can set automatic alerts for, like I mentioned. And when you get these cues that someone's increasing usage, decreasing usage, tie that to what you know that typically means from that user and reach out to them trying to solve their problem. This sounds like a lot. You've got to run all these reports. You've got to do these things. But I will say largely when you have this infrastructure in place, when you have these reports created in Salesforce, Tableau is another common software that is used to track users' usage of a product, etc. The reason I put so much emphasis on this is if you can find a top performer at your company that's already tracking this, you can ask a top performer, what are they tracking? Are they seeing that one white paper or one customer case study leads to a higher conversion rate than others? These are the types of things you wanna figure out first and prioritize those. And again, because of the automation available, because of the tools that are built, while it is a little bit of effort up front to establish, once it's in place, it can run reports for you automatically. It can alert you if a specific customer you've been tracking or any customer in your territory is now using way more of the product or way less than they were before, et cetera, et cetera. Now that I'm in an account executive role, I don't have as much time to prospect. That's where I'm blocking an hour a day to look through the highest intent for leads so I can at least prospect to people who I suspect 
if they pick up or if they're willing to take a conversation, it would be a very high value conversation because they're already very interested in what we're doing or using our product altogether. Now, let's say maybe we've exhausted all those, you're an SDR, you wanna keep working through. There's really two other categories that I would spend the majority of my time in to try and have the highest chance of having a meaningful conversation, creating an opportunity, and ultimately getting paid. And that would be, again, leveraging reporting, leveraging the tools available. If you're at a large company, I'm sure there's many lost opportunities you could probe into to see what kinds of prospects maybe considered buying your software a year ago, budget froze, or maybe they were looking at it six months ago and the champion at that company who is trying to get that software bought ultimately left, quit, got fired, whatever it might be. These are where I'm going to go next. Can I see if there's a lost opportunity that the only reason they didn't buy is because budgets were frozen for the next three months. These are low hanging fruit that if you put a little bit of time and automation into, ideally you can uncover rather quickly. And again, in my opinion, assuming there's actually something there worth pursuing, it's much better than making completely cold calls that I'm gonna be honest with you, have been very ineffective for me over the last six to 12 months. And again, the point is not to say that cold calls, cold emailing is completely dead. It's definitely not. But it, like I said, it's getting harder and harder to break through the noise. So that's why I always prioritize if I can have someone with any type of information or any type of data, that's better than just being like, hey, you work at a company that looks like you could use what we do. That's where I'm always putting my time and effort first and always, when possible, trying to automate to minimize the amount of research I have to do while maximizing my output. And lastly, again, let's say you've exhausted all of that. Me being an account executive at this time, I don't really go beyond that in terms of research, in terms of prospecting. Maybe you're an SDR and you've got to keep getting your numbers up. You've got to hit your KPIs. You've got to make calls and emails. You've got to try and hit your number as an SDR. This is where I'm going to try as best as possible to find the types of companies that maybe match a customer success story we have or match our use case very well. And from there, I'm not just reaching out and saying like, hey, it looks like you could use our technology. What I'm gonna do is try and find senior developers, VPs of engineers, CTOs from their companies, et cetera, right? And try and find and understand what type of technology they're using. If you've never done this before, one thing that you'll notice is software engineers, other people that are maybe trying to change jobs that are interviewing elsewhere, a lot of times they bolster up their LinkedIn and put a lot more information about the projects that they worked on, the types of technologies that they're using because they're trying to get hired by another company that wants those same skills or the same types of tool sets for them to develop on at their company. And so what this allows me to do is find a senior engineer, find a lower level engineer that talks about using all AWS stuff, that talks about the specific tools that they're already using, that talks about the types of projects that they've worked on and that they've grown. And now I can use that information to better approach and formulate a very strong point of view when I'm going to the senior manager, when I'm going to the C-suite or otherwise and trying to connect and create a conversation around what we do. And again, the reason that this is last on the priority list for me is that it typically does require require more manual effort up front to find this information. But again, if you've exhausted, obviously the inbound leads where they're reaching out to you wanting more information. If you have gone through the MQLs from the prior day that have downloaded a white paper, looked at different case studies, whatever it may be that are organically searching and already interested in what you're doing. If you have then exhausted those and now want to run reports and check in on some strategic accounts and see how they're using your product, whether they're an existing customer, whether they're using your free product or otherwise, are there traditional signals that you see if maybe their use has grown rapidly or de even declined? Are these are the types of threads I'm looking for that I can pull to at a minimum create a conversation? From there, again, if I've exhausted all of that, I'm gonna look at lost opportunities. Were there people that six months ago couldn't buy because their budget froze? Were there people that a year ago we lost our champion and lost all the momentum we had in the account? And lastly, again, are there companies that fit your use case? And it's not enough to just reach out and say, hey, it looks like you could use our product. But are you leveraging things like LinkedIn? Are you looking at annual reports if you have that luxury to see how they're allocating their financial spending? There's many different threads you can pull, but I hope that gives you an overview of how to efficiently prioritize your time. As a rule of thumb, I try to automate as much as possible and I try to speak with the people who have most recently engaged with the company and work backwards from there. But if you got a lot out of this video, we'd appreciate it if you subscribe. And if you haven't seen the recent launch of our SDR Bootcamp Tech Sales Ascension and you're looking to break into tech sales, check it out in the description below. But appreciate your time as always and we'll see you in the next video.